Hey, I'm Freddie, and today I'm going to show you how I painted and put together this Hellboy pistol. Right now, I'm really bored while I'm under quarantine, so I'm going to be making and painting Hellboy's Good Samaritan pistol. I got a kit from my old boss Adam a while back and I want to use it to show you a couple of cool techniques that you might not know of. There's lots of different ways you can get faux metallic finishes, whether they're through spray painting, airbrushing, or cold casting. I always like to use powders when I'm doing any metallic finish because it gives it the most realistic look, but sometimes it's pretty hard to capture on the camera. Okay, so here's the kit. I made a rough assembly just to see how it would look and yeah, this is going to be great. So whenever you get a resin kit, I like to put it in a soap bucket and wash off all, all the parts. If there's any mold release left on any of these parts, it'll screw up our paint big time. So I just like to make sure and give everything a nice soap bath. Everything's already smooth and sanded. There's a couple spots that I'm going to go over and sand. I'm going to give this a light buff with steel wool and that should be enough. All right, so these parts are already mostly smooth, so what I'm gonna do is just sand these down. I like to use nail files. Nail files are really good for hard to reach places as soon as you're sanding. So I'm just gonna go along here and sand these seam lines down, make them seamless. So instead of using sandpaper to sand this thing down, I'm just going to get some coarse steel wool. I like using steel wool because it saves a lot of time, saves a lot of time and frustration, and it always gives the resin just enough bite for the paint either way. So that's a 4-0, and it's a little bit too coarse for me, oh, a little too fine. But the coarsest one I have is double zero, and that should work just fine. I just gotta adjust my ring light here. Oh boy. Now that all our parts have some teeth, it's time to paint. So I'm gonna start with the semi-gloss flat black. I always start out with Rust-Oleum paint and primer. I love the look of this when you give it a nice buff with the fine steel wool. It gives it a nice shiny look. Right, I'm just gonna make some hooks so I can hang my stuff up. It helps to have skewers that we can glue on to hang things up. I don't feel like drilling holes, so I'm just going to hang them. This one is ready for a skewer. So I have a bunch of chopsticks laying around. Almost. Skip around. That should. Stuff right in there. Revolver shish kebab. Now I'm only doing one light coat first. I keep a bunch of floral floral foam around just for these situations. Where did I put the blow dryer? All right, time for another pass of paint. You just wanna go real light with all of your passes. You just wanna spritz the layers on little by little, especially after your second coat. Skewers are also great when you're trying to mask off corners of certain parts. I go over all the edges that I'm going to end up cutting with my X-Acto knife just to make sure everything is nice and snug and not going to come loose whenever I'm spray painting. If there's one thing I hate, it's bleeding through the masking tape. Hate it. I'm going to end up painting the insignia on the handle later on, so right now I'm just going to mask it off and deal with it later.
While I'm at it, I don't really like the screws that are molded into the handle, so I'm pre-drilling a couple of holes so I can put a couple of real screws in later on. Then I'm putting in some countersink holes so I can make everything nice and flush. The only brown I have on hand is khaki brown. I wanted something darker, but I can just darken this up with some brush-on acrylic paint. I prefer using Tamiya paint over anything else. It's already thin enough to put in an airbrush, and it dries super quick. So far, my plan for the handle is to cover it entirely in dark brown and backwash it with some rubbing alcohol and a sponge, and a toothbrush if I have it. Oh look, I found one. Right now I'm just trying to get some streaks going to make it look like wood grain. I ended up putting on too much rubbing alcohol, so I'm going to rethink my whole process here. But so far it looks pretty good. Good way to start. Strokes. Give me a little bit more control. I prefer to use this kind of brush for texture, make it look a little bit more like wood grain underneath. Thin, thin it out and try and get yourself a nice gradient between the lines. A bristly brush when I get the chance just to pat it out, soften the, the edges a little bit. Yeah, that's acceptable. You should at least use a combination of three different colors. I have a different shade of brown here that I'm just going to go over a little bit just to give it a little bit more variety. And I'm not going to go too crazy here. And not cover the thing up completely. One of the tough things about what I do for a living is I make things to where they look fantastic in person and I bring out all these tiny little bits of detail, but they never catch on camera. So it's difficult trying to find that balance of making it look amazing in person and amazing just for the camera. All right, now it's just subtle enough Now that's dry, I'm going to use some Tamiya Black to just flushen out the grain lines. I'm only going to use a little amount. I'm going to dip the side of my brush ever so lightly in there. That's the tip there. And I'm going to work my way up and down. Just lightly brushing some light strokes. Just really focusing on the grain line. Remember, the goal is subtlety here, so. Just want to get this nice and subtle. Now, I just ever so lightly dipped my brush in a little rubbing alcohol, dab that down. So it's relatively dry and there's only a little bit of alcohol on there. So use that to slightly blend the colors even more. Right now I'm just trying to control the colors, blend them into even brush strokes. So. Did I mention I'm halfway making this up as I go along? <clears throat> then go over with your more bristly brush just to get those textures. So I'm just dry brushing on a little bit of black with the, the big brush. Trying my best not to make it look like brush strokes.
that is good enough. Just going to hit these top spots a little. I'd say that's good. Now here's where I can start applying graphite powder. If you want more of a chrome finish, you can apply the graphite directly to your paint once it's dry. If you want more of a flat, brushed steel look, scrub your part with steel wool first and then apply the graphite. Most of the time I put on some spar varnish first and then apply the graphite, but unfortunately I don't have any and it's going to take 30 days to get here because of the quarantine. So the reason you want to put varnish down is so the powder sticks to your part because these parts are still relatively freshly painted, they're still a little soft, so the powder should adhere to the part relatively easily. So first step, rub your part down with some fine grade steel wool. Graphite powder is a good way to get metallic, gun metallic looking parts, especially with primer. Like these divots here, I'm going to leave those glossy just so we have a, a difference in, uh, in color and texture. Once I finished rubbing these parts, I gave them a nice pat down with a tack cloth and started applying the graphite. So with something with paint this fresh, you want to apply the powder using gloves because there's less chance of getting fingerprints. Brush it and dab and brush. We gotta get that in there. Here's without graphite, with graphite. Bring apart those scratches, dip through steel wool, shine pretty nicely. You can just rub it in, smooth it out, give it a nice polish. This piece I'll just rub in with my finger. And then you want to take a clean rag and just give it a nice buff. <sighs> All right, this looks pretty good. There's just a couple more things to paint before final assembly. I have to unmask my insignia here and paint it a nice bronze color. Luckily, I have just the thing. I highly recommend getting some rub and buff. If you don't know what rub and buff is, I'll show you. Alright, so first step, take off the t masking tape. So I like to push this around a little bit, kind of mix it up while it's in the container. Sometimes comes out really liquidy. You just want to mix in that thinner with the wax while it's in there just so it's all nice and liquidy. All right, I like to get a tongue depressor. Just take a little bit, dab it out. The excess, you basically don't want to dry brush this stuff on. end up getting too much on it gets really thick and almost like a if you get too much stuff on you're not gonna like it then once you have that all on I like to take a gloved hand and just rub it 
That's why it's called rub and buff. To buff it, you gotta rub it. Before I put this piece on, on I realized Hellboy has a little hook and latch on the bottom of his pistol, so I'm gonna drill this hole out. That should be a relatively snug fit. So I'm just gonna use some CA glue on this. Get this lined up. Just hold that down for a little bit. Got that all glued in place. I'll just put this hook. Nice and snug. Now I can screw in the screws on the side here that I wanted earlier. That is nice. All right, time for final assembly. Revolver here, I'm just gonna stick this bolt in here. Put a washer on that end so it'll have enough room to spin around. Stay on. I don't have a perfect size bolt to fit here, so what I ended up doing is just cut two bolts in half. Why aren't you going in? Let me screw him in there. Honestly, I don't even think I need CA glue. Pops off. Relatively nicely. And I'll throw this guy on here and that should screw right in. All right, that's that. Looking nice and shiny. Now it's time for his daisy chain. So I just took a leather a piece of leather scrap here, tied a knot on one end. I'm not the best at knots. First, I tied a knot on one end and made a loop. And then from that loop, I just made a daisy chain. Pulled the string through, like so, and you keep doing it. Make a loop, pull it through. Make a loop, pull it through. Now before I get to the end of that loop, I'm going to do the same thing, pull it through the uh, hole right there, straighten this out, and then tie it off. There, that's Hellboy's daisy chain. Alright, now absolutely last step is silver rub and buff. Now using rub and buff you're going to want to go over all the edges or at least most of the edges and dry brush over them to highlight bare metal that's been exposed. So using just a little bit of rub and buff I'm going over most of the edges, giving them a light dab. If you don't like having brush marks and just want flat exposure, I rub a little bit on a popsicle stick. And then I just dab the pops popsicle stick over the edges. Just make sure you only have a little bit showing on the popsicle stick. Alternate between brushing and using a popsicle stick to get the most realistic effect.
try and focus on the raised areas just to make them pop for the camera. Alright, so the gun's put together and it has its coats of graphite and rub and buff. There's just one more thing I have to do and I can call this completed. Every single gun I make, I like to add a little bit of rust. Just a little amount to give a little character. For something like this that I want it to be really subtle, I use milk paint. Milk paint is used for painting wood. You mix it in with water and then you paint wood and you get different colors. It comes in powder form and that powder I dust it on pretty much just like I did with the graphite, only it doesn't stick that well. It's really good for display pieces and for cosplay pieces that don't get handled a lot. So let's give it a shot. So there's not much to it other than just dipping and dabbing. So I like this because it gets in all the cracks and crevices. Just enough to give it a feel and then blow on it. If you get too much on, you can always just rub it off. Just with a little just with a little effort. Use. I like to mix it up. And with all that rust, the pistol's finished. Another addition to my collection. I'm really happy with the final product. I only wish I had a few more supplies that wouldn't take forever to get here if I would order them online, but that's quarantine for you. So from here on out, this will be a nice addition to my wall of pistols and ray guns behind me there. So really happy to have this on display. If you happen to know the maker of this pistol, please send me a message and let me know so I can credit him down below. I'm going to be a stereotypical YouTuber and ask you to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos. I go over advanced techniques when I have the materials and I'll show you a couple cool things.